Hi, I'm Josh Vandery on Ansible for Network Automation, and today we're going to explore using Ansible for Meraki Automation. So thus far, I've shown a lot about CLI-driven technologies for Ansible, and we've only touched briefly on using an API. So I'm going to take a look at Meraki a little bit with you. One, Meraki has an expansive amount of Ansible modules for taking a look at your networks, wireless, and VLANs, etc. Two, this may also help give an example of what other solutions may look like that have an SD-WAN-like functionality that are API-driven and have Ansible modules. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So at the end of the session, we're going to have gathered organization and network information from the Meraki dashboard. We're going to set up Meraki VLANs with Ansible. And then we're going to manage Meraki wireless networks. We're going to create and delete SSIDs at the same time. Before we get started on our demonstrations for today, I want to take a moment to take a look at the Meraki modules on the Ansible doc page. Go into your favorite browser and your favorite search engine and search Ansible network modules, and you'll get taken to the page and then do a browser find for Meraki. Here you'll find a whole expansive list of their modules that are continuously expanding. I remember a few, just a few years back, it was minimal, just a couple items. So taking a look here, you've got Meraki Admin. I really like using Meraki Device Network Organization. SNMP is another piece that's kind of friendly to have used. You can dig into each of these for yourself. We're going to take a look at the VLAN, the network, and the wireless information here today. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at the Meraki Ansible modules in action. Let's take a look at our file structure that we've got that we're working with in this demo. We've got a few demo YAML files in there that we'll take a look at. We've got our files, we've got our secret info that we'll take a brief look at. We've got a new Meraki key in there. And then we've got our group bars, we've got a new Meraki remote YAML file. And then the inventory's got a small update as well to it. So let's go ahead and first take a look at the Ansible Vault here. Here we've got this new Meraki key. It's a string, and that's what's leveraged to get at the Meraki API at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the group vars. Here we've got our VLANs that we've seen before with a couple new keys here because they are needed for the Meraki API to work. We've got the subnet and gateway added for each of the VLANs. And then we've got our wireless where we've got SSID 1, SSID 2, and those will actually be the names of the SSIDs when we get to working on those. And lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at the inventory. We've got the Meraki underscore remote inventory, which is the Ignition Remote HQ1. Let's take a look at that playbook that we're going to do here first of the Meraki devices. So at the first play here, we've got our host is Meraki Remote, as we would expect here. Our connection is local because we're going to be doing everything from this machine and looking to do API calls. So that's going to be a connection type there. And then we have our VARS files that we've seen before. The VARS there is something else that we don't really use in this, but if you want to have a Meraki header set up where you, you need to have your content type of application JSON set, and then they're looking for this in the headers of x-cisco-meraki-api-key and then the Meraki key. That's exactly what's set up for if you are actually using the URI module that we saw a few lessons ago. In our tasks, there's a new thing here, a block. So there's two ways that you can use blocks in Ansible that are both kind of handy. The first one is similar to Python's try command setup. So that way when you try something here, if there's a failure, what is that exception and how do you handle that exception? So they've got exception handling implemented with the block. Also within blocks, you can set various attributes to the entire set of tasks. So here we've got delegate underscore to the local host. So that way local host will execute on all four tasks, tasks that we see here. The debugs and what I actually call proper tasks on it. First task number one, we're getting our Meraki organizational ID. We're going to go ahead and use the Meraki organization where we just need an auth key and then query, and then we're going to save that. From there, we're going to go ahead and print that out, see what that looks like. Task number two is we're going to get a list of all the devices. So we're using the Meraki underscore device module. We've got our auth key set, our organizational name. Take a look here. We've got the variable from task one of Meraki org info. We're going into dot data. And then the zeroth item, because .data is a list, 
and we're getting the name so we can pass on the org name. And then the state is going to be query. We're asking for information. We're not creating new or making sure a network exists that would be present or deleting if the network were to be absent for a state. From there, we'll register that to Meraki devices. And then we're gonna go ahead and print out all those devices. And as we do this, we're gonna make sure we ask for our vault password because there is information in there that we need to get at. And then we'll go ahead and get through this and print all this information out. We've got our organization, we've got our ID name, and then we've got the list of devices, and then we've printed them. We've got a firewall that's an MX64. AP01 is an MR33, as is AP02. And then switch 01 is a MS220P. Let's take a look at the demo for the Meraki VLAN. So the, for this play, it's a single play. We're going to use our host Meraki remote. Its connection is going to be local again. In our VARs section, I've got a new one here of net underscore name. I didn't want to get into the Meraki modules for finding the network name that we're looking to use, so I've gone, gone ahead and statically defined that. You can take a look a little bit more as well. So first task in the block, the block again is making everything delegate to local host. We'll take a look at that at the bottom. Task one, we're getting our Meraki organizational ID. We need that for information. Task number two, we're getting the list of VLANs. Here, it's Meraki underscore VLAN. We're using an auth key, the net name of Josh V, the organizational ID, again, that we got from task one, and then we're gonna do a query. So that's gonna be our pre-query. Then task three, we're just gonna go ahead and print out the length, how many of the VLANs are configured for the site. Then we'll go ahead and create some remote sites. VLANs, so that on those remote site VLANs, you're going to have VLANs 2, 3, 100 added, and they'll have a name that go with them, a subnet, and the appliance IP, which is the gateway. So in the Meraki, the firewall appliance does need to have a IP address assigned to it. Then task five, we'll repeat the get VLANs with the Meraki VLAN state query, and then we're going to save that to the Meraki underscore VLAN post. And then task six, we're going to go ahead and print the length of it, and we'll see that it's different. We will run this through a second time, where you will get to see the actual execution that's idempotent, and it will not create it. It will have had four VLANs. I've already got one created for the Meraki environment. It needs to have one in general. So we'll start off with one before run number one, end with four after run number one, and then run number two, we'll see that it's idempotent and see everything okay there. So let's take a look at the Playbook execution. So play one, running task one, we've got our Meraki organizational information, and now we are starting to get the VLANs that exist. We currently have one VLAN that exists in the Meraki dashboard for the site. Now we're gonna go ahead and create each of the sites, a VLAN two, VLAN 3 and 100. After we've got all three of those created, we're going to go ahead and query again to get the list of all the VLANs. And now we've got four. So there we see that we've got the changed in yellow. If we run this again, we're going to see that everything will come up green and it is item potent. So you are able to use Ansible to just, you can run this again and again on a network with, and there will be no changes unless there were some other changes made outside of the process. So as we go through, we're just going to wait for everything to get through the creation again. And we're going to see that we had nothing changed at the very bottom. So that was a good item potent run. Now that we've seen VLANs, what about wireless in the Meraki space? We'll go ahead and take a look at what that will look like. So we've got a couple playbooks that we're going to take a look at. The wireless network number two takes off a little bit further off of number one. Number one is much the same that we saw with the VLANs of we're just creating SSIDs. So all the headers are much the same as before. We'll go with our block one. Task number one, we get the Meraki org ID again. Task two, we're getting the 
SSIDs. Before number three, we've got a debug SSID pre. Take a look at our when statement here. We've got when unconfigured is not in the name of the SSID. So on this, Meraki was giving me back 15 SSIDs because that's how many they have on the site there. And I, I didn't want to go ahead and show all 15. That's going to clutter up the screen. So I've gone ahead and I'm looping over the Meraki SSID underscore pre dot data. And then they're only going to display that when unconfigured is not in the name of the SSID. And I'm going to take a look after this at another, the ansible.cfg was updated as well. There's a callback that allows us to not see skipped. So that'll be interesting. And then task number three creates the new wireless SSIDs. Here we've got the Meraki underscore SSID where the auth key, net name, org name is what we've seen before. State of present, the name is item.name, and then enabled is true. So that's going to be there, and we're looping over wireless. And I said I want to take a look at the ansible.config. Here at the very bottom, we've got display underscore skipped underscore hosts equals to false. By default, that is by true. It's not going to display something when it's skipped. Kind of a nice handy callback as they call it in Ansible. So let's go ahead and demo this playbook run. All right, so the play one going through, we've got our demo of Meraki environment. Task one is getting the information. We've printed out, we have one SSID that is configured right now. That's a guest network. And now it's going through task three and creating the SSIDs. So we're SSID one with the assignment mode of bridge, VLAN ID of two. And then we're also going to make SSID number two and get that assigned to number two. So let's take a look at running this again. And we'll see that this is another Ansible module by Meraki that is item potent. So now we've got three SSIDs that are created on the pre-change. Now on the creation, it's already all set. It doesn't need to actually create this, so it's saying that everything is good to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at playbook number two now. So in here, the first several tasks are all the same. Task three is showing the SSIDs before we add any. Task four is creating the SSIDs. Task five goes ahead and creates those same SSIDs that we were talking about just before. Task six, we're going to go ahead and print out the post data. The name there is wrong. And then task seven, we're going to remove the new networks that we just created. So as we look at the Meraki underscore SSID, we've got our same auth key, net name, and org name. State is now absent. Name is item.name. And since it's absent, it'll go ahead and just remove those. Then we get our get SSID so that we, at the end to see that we're down to one. And then we'll pull, go ahead and print those out again. Let's take a look at this demo. So we've got play one, going and getting the organizational ID. Right now, we still have those same number of SSIDs configured because we did not delete them after we ran them on the first demonstration. So we'll see the item potency again that we're going to be creating the wireless SSID. We print them all out. There are three of them there. We can see SSID 2. Now we're going to go ahead and remove those new networks. So we've removed SSID 1 and 2 from the environment. And then we go ahead and get the SSIDs again and print them out and see that we're back down to our one. To review what we've accomplished today, we've taken a look at gathering organizational network information from the Meraki dashboard. We've set up Meraki VLANs using Ansible, and we've managed Meraki wireless networks with Ansible.